Rhaenyra Targaryen gets stabbed by Alicent Hightower with a cat's paw dagger in the latest episode 7 titled Driftmark of House of the Dragon. If you paid close attention, you'd realize that the moment preceding this is deeply connected to Aegon the Conqueror's dream. Although they focused mainly on Alicent's reaction as he's demanding an eye for an eye, there's another important moment in this chaos that's equally important. Stick with us and find out all the details. Starting off, here's how the cat's paw dagger scene is connected with Aegon the Conqueror's dream. If you were distracted by the intensity of the discourse between Rhaenyra and Alicent, you might have noticed that there's a brief pause when Rhaenyra tries to prevent Alicent from harming her and her kids. During the short pause, we see her looking at the dagger, with flames burning behind it. It shows Aegon's A Song of Ice and Fire prophecy carved upon the Valyrian steel blade. It's a small but important moment that makes her think about the prince that was promised, and the potential threat that Westeros may face. Face. It's actually a reminder of just how much bigger this whole thing is than just her and Alicent's rivalry, and how important it is in her views that she claims the Iron Throne and passes it on to her heirs. When King Viserys first told her about Aegon's dream, it's likely that she might have thought about the possibility that she may be the Targaryen ruler who's destined to lead the great fight against the White Walkers should it come during her rule. With Viserys' illness bringing him closer to death, and Rhaenyra getting even closer to becoming the queen, it's likely that she's thinking ahead about the future. The cat's paw dagger has been passed down from one Targaryen ruler to the other. It once belonged to Aegon the Conqueror, who got it from Aenar the Exile. No one knows who had it before him. During episode 4, we see her reading the inscription about the prophecy on the dagger. Later, Viserys tells her that the burden of this prophecy is larger than the throne as he hands her the responsibility of safeguarding it. Moving on, does Rhaenyra think that Jace Valerian is the prince that was promised. Although it was revealed in Game of Thrones that the prophecy has been mistranslated all this time, as it could be a prince or a princess, likely Rhaenyra is already considering the possibility of Jace being the potential candidate for the role. Obviously, things would recontextualize, if not change, her motivations and actions before and during the Dance of the Dragons. When she hears that her kids are being called bastards or when Alicent attempts to hurt them, she isn't just thinking about their birthright, but about the fate of the entire realm and the weight of the prophecy that she'd eventually have to pass on to Jace. Though the White Walkers aren't in House of the Dragon, Jace still has some connection to Aegon's dream and the person who might fulfill it. Yes, Jon Snow. Just like Jon, Jace is also the heir to the Iron Throne. Both of them have a mix of Valyrian blood and the blood of the First Men. Besides this, Jace will eventually have a connection with the Starks as he promises his firstborn daughter to Lord Cregan Stark's son to form the Pact of Ice and Fire in exchange for their support of Rhaenyra's black factions during the Dance of the Dragon. The pact doesn't come to fruition as he doesn't live long enough to have children. Still, Cregan Stark supports Rhaenyra and her son with Daemon, who becomes King Aegon III Targaryen, and makes Cregan the Hand of the King. So, Jace's actions brought together ice and fire, Starks and Targaryens, which was needed for the prophecy to become a reality. Following that, let's take a look at the dagger's journey through Game of Thrones. We first had a glimpse of this famous famous cat's paw dagger in Game of Thrones, where it had quite the journey. First, it arrived at Winterfell, where it was used in a failed attempt to kill Bran Stark. Later, Ned Stark brought it to King's Landing, where it ended up in Littlefinger's hands. He kept it throughout his journey with Sansa towards the north. When she took control of Winterfell, he brought it with him and gifted it to Bran Stark in an attempt to win the boy's trust. Well, we know how it bites him back. Of course, Bran saw through his intentions and gave it to his sister Arya who needed it the most. She famously used it to kill the Night King during the Battle of Winterfell, making this cat's paw dagger the most impactful blade in Westeros' history. It only needs to be seen what adventures it'll have on House of the Dragon. Last but not the least, how does this situation change Game of Thrones? This information could change our views of Game of Thrones in interesting ways. First of all, it blurs out all the lines between Aegon's dream and the prince that was promised, or Azor Ahai. In fact, the similar Similarity between these prophecies just keeps growing. As a refresher, it was the Red Priestess Melisandre who mainly brought forth the idea of Azor Ahai. She predicted that a legendary fighter would emerge to destroy the evil, someone who would wield a flaming sword and destroy the White Walkers. This only makes us think who did Aegon actually dream of then? Was
Was it Jon Snow, with his Targaryen blood, who helps in terminating the Night King and also assassinates Daenerys Targaryen? Or could it be Arya Stark, who uses the dagger to kill the Night King once and for all? It's true that Arya isn't a Targaryen by blood, but that part probably doesn't matter as much. The other way that the dagger's inscription changes our view is that everyone's curious about how it ended up in the hands of an assassin. Hopefully, the prequel show will clarify the prophecy and clear up one of the biggest unanswered questions. Other related news. Let's take a look at other interesting news about House of the Dragon. First off, Game of Thrones fans are boycotting George R.R. Martin's next book. Yes, it's true. Martin has been getting a lot of criticism from fans lately. Well, it's not because of something sketchy that he's done, but due to the co-authors who've been accused of racism. He recently announced that his new book, The Rise of the Dragon, an illustrated history of the Targaryen Dynasty Volume 1, will be out on October 25th. It's a reference book for those who want to learn more about Westeros' most powerful family. Now, fans are calling for a boycott due to the racist history and problematic behavior of the married co-authors Elio M. Garcia Jr. and Linda Antonson. In the past, superfans had collaborated with Martin before HBO adapted the series into a show. Soon after, Elio and Linda created an online forum for the books in 1999 and later got recruited by Martin as fact-checkers for his book A Feast of Crows. In 2014, they also served as co-authors of The World of Ice and Fire. Fans have taken issue with one of Linda's blog posts from a decade ago where she disagrees with the casting of people for the characters that are white in the books. Now she's fighting back and says that she isn't racist as both of them believe that diversity shouldn't trump the story. Up next, Olivia Cook breaks the internet with her Savage X Fenty photoshoot. House of the Dragon fans have been in love with the new cast of the show and they just keep giving us more reasons to love them. The latest example comes in the form of a recent photoshoot from Olivia Cook, who's playing the adult version of Alicent Hightower. Clips from her new ad campaign for Rihanna's lingerie brand Savage X Fenty were recently released online and they've sent the fans into a frenzy. What's even more interesting is that we see her wearing green and black colors in the video, which are two of the factions of the Targaryen family that'll eventually get into a civil war on the show. Alicent is pretty much the leader of Team Green and she's also the one who kicks off the conflict. There's no doubt that she's pulled off these looks very well and we're even more excited about seeing her in more advertisements for the brand. Finally, here's why Damon laughed during Lena's funeral. House of the Dragons Episode 7 opened with the scene of Lena's funeral. While everyone is being respectful, Damon lets out a chuckle which didn't sit well with the attendees. He laughs during the speech which gives the notion that Valerian's bloodline is true and pure. Of course, Damon and Lena decided to marry, but it's safe to say that their bond was mainly a political gain rather than true love. So he might be laughing at the idea that they had true love, which sadly isn't true. Besides this, it may also hint at the fact that there's also an absence of true love among the families who are present at the funeral. Rhaenyra and Laenor are married, but they have secret relationships with other people, and Alicent and King Viserys are only married due to their personal duties for their houses. That's a wrap for the video. Do you believe Rhaenyra will be able to safeguard the dagger? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more amazing and exciting videos. See you in the next one.